You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, Bert. Well, all right, fellas. Well, it's go. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift. And it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. Audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done for professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Well, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday, 20th day of February, 2018. Stand by. I have a, I have a slight hitch in my giddy up. <clears throat> and it's the oddest thing ever. I don't... Huh. I may have to try to struggle. This is just weird. <clears throat> yeah, you you know what the problem is, huh? You want to know? What's the problem? On the monitor, uh, the radio server monitor. Where I would normally right now, 
because I have opened the mic for myself, I would mute the mic over there. But the cursor is behind the application and behind the chart that I'm monitoring. I tried the old escape key, which, you know, can fix a lot of things. And, and, and I realize also that sometimes you just have to reboot. But this is a little, this is a little bit freaky. A little bit freaky. Uh, what if I move this way over here? I'm befuddled, Mike. I, uh, I wish someday, I could be more helpful. So, someday when you're my age, you'll be befuddled. Oh, it's this thing popping up over here. No, that wasn't that. Okay. Now I didn't quit worrying about it. What, me worry? Hmm. Worry? As long as there's no echo coming back, that's the reason I mute that other mic is because the built-in mic over there on that monitor is because I don't want there to be feedback and whatever. Hey, you know what? Let's just move along. How are you today? Um, well, I don't know. I'm I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Physically, I mean. Right. My temperature is up and down. My my blood pressure is up and down. Have they gotten with you in regards to any ideas to what it might be? <clears throat> no. I hope no. it's not dengue fever. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't either. It's some tropical thing you get in the jungles. I don't know. You you probably don't have that. Uh, so. Yeah, probably not. I okay, hope it's not folks. I am <laughs> just flying in. I had to get up this morning, and put on uh, slacks and a shirt and a tie and go downtown for a meeting with other professional people. Something I haven't done in whoa a long time, and while. In a way, it felt kind of good. It also reminded me that I kind of don't like having to do that. So, uh, anyway, my day's been an adventure, and plus I stood in line at the post office, and, oh, I've, I've done, I, we used to say, because our company, uh, even my previous company, we started at 6 a.m. in the morning. We get more done by 9 a.m. than the U.S. Army gets done all day. Yeah. That was our commercial. All right. So anyway, welcome, guys. Uh, if you are looking for the live training room, yeah, I just missed it, okay? Sometimes folks get the two confused, and it's easy to understand. We do a live training room Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern. We then take a 30-minute break, union rules. We come back at noon and do two hours of live Christian Financial Talk Radio, where we talk about the markets and headlines and stuff, okay? So if you've come here to watch us trade live, you're going to be disappointed. But don't leave, stick around, because there is much infotainment to be had in the coming two hours. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're in the live training room tomorrow morning. This is where you begin to see our methodology, how we do what we've been doing for so many years. I mean, let's face it, this is the place, this is ground zero where people become traders since 2005. Okay, I'm going to run through the numbers really quick and then turn it over to Michael. As you can see from the chart I have up, the S&P 500 E-mini futures, you can see the action overnight since the Globex opened last night. Now, <clears throat> we had a holiday, and I'll get into all that in a moment. My point is this. If you cannot see my chart, you won't see the charts Michael shows you in just a second. So do go to our homepage at cfrn.net. Right-hand side, click the great big microphone. Follow the instructions, and in 30 seconds, you'll be registered through the end of the month. And that gives you one-click access to the show every day. The other approach, youtube.com slash CFRN slash live. Bookmark that page and you have one-click access every single day. So real quick, let me throw the numbers at you. Here in the U.S., these are the cash markets. We'll get to the futures in a bit. Currently, the Dow is down 58 points. The NASDAQ is up 55. Now, that's three-quarters of 1%. 
S&P 500 is up just a little over four, and the Russell 2000 is up two points on the session. In our commodity basket, crude oil up 58 cents. That's just shy of 1%, trading 62.26 last. Gold, on the other hand, down $23.50. That's one and three quarter percent, trading 13 32.70 last. In the Asian markets today, the Nikkei closed down 224 points. That's right at 1%. Shanghai was up 14, and the Hang Seng closed down 242 points. That's three quarters of 1%. And last but not least, in the European markets, FTSE was the only red on the screen for Europe. Uh, the FTSE was down almost one point at the close. The DAX, on the other hand, tacked on gains of 102 points, almost 1%. The CAC tacked on gains of 33 points, which is over half of 1%. So basically green in Europe, except for that one point holding the FTSE back. Uh, red in Asia, except for the 14 points that the uh, 14 green points the Shanghai managed to add. And then here at home, the only red on the screen at the moment is the Dow, which is down a solid 59 points. Now I will point out the Dow is down 59 points. The S&P 500 is up four points. It is rare that these two diverge this much from one another. So which one has it right? Who's leading the pack today? Will the S&P go negative and follow the Dow or will the Dow go positive and follow the S&P? I won't prophesy, but I will tell you this. There's very few absolutes in the world of trading, but I absolutely guarantee you that by close of business today, there is a high probability that the S&P and the Dow will both be on the same side of the street and that 10 to 1 ratio that we've enjoyed for so many years will be in place. In other words, if the Dow closes down 50 points, the S&P will close down 5. If the Dow closes up 100, the S&P will close up 10. Just that's not a trading strategy, okay? It's just a little something to file away and keep in the back of your mind. Now, do they diverge occasionally? Yes, they're doing it right now. Will they come back together? Absolutely. Who's right? I don't know. Okay, uh, said a lot. Michael, would you like to take this opportunity to share with the good people exactly what happened in the live training room? Sure. Be happy to. Jeff Bezos just revealed a video of the massive 10,000 year clock being built inside a Texas mountain. 10,000 year clock. I, I don't know. <clears throat> remember, <laughs> remember that, remember the, uh, uh, oh, the clock that was running out of time at the end of what year was it? 2012? No. No, no, no. That's not right. The at, not the Aztecs. The other people, like David Williams was always talking about them the, the, with the great record keeping and those clocks. Remember? No. They didn't have computers. They didn't have modern equipment, but they did this incredible charting of the planets and, you know, they knew. Uh, oh, somebody in the chat box, please rescue me here. Who are the people I'm talking about? And the, the clock was in a wheel. It was a wheel. Come on. I'll give something away to the first Mayan? person that gets it right. Yeah, the Mayans. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the Mayans. Okay. Mayans. Okay. And, and when was the world supposed to end according to the Mayan clock? 20, was it 2012? Oh, my gosh. Time flies. It's 2018. 
So anyway, uh, there were all these documentaries and all these TV shows and all these books about how the Mayans were so super intelligent uh, without computers, etc. And they had charted the heavens and all this stuff. And then the Mayan calendar ended in 2012. So I have a little cartoon on the blog somewhere. I can't find it right now. Uh, but there's two Mayan guys in a cave or something. And they're chipping away, creating these calendars out of these big stone wheels. And one guy looks at the other guy and goes, hey, man. He, he was just doing 2012, chipping it out, chiseling it. And he looks at the other guy and goes, hey, man, I just ran out of room. And the other guy looked at him and goes, whoa, that's going to freak some people out, huh? Get it? Get it. Maybe he had to be there. I don't know. <laughs> when I told Kevin O'Leary, he just, he laughed. He belly laughed. But uh, <laughs> anyway, he's Mr. Wonderful, so, and I'm not. Okay, moving right along. Uh, let me introduce you to Michael. Uh, co-host, cohort, companion. Um, I suppose I'll yes. hit mute and allow you to do your song and dance. Okay. I'm ready. You ready? All right. Ready. And one, and two, and three. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, the 20th day of February 2018. Um, let's see. Let's see what we've got going here. Okay. If you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the home page here at CFRN.net. Right up at the top, it says sign up for the CFRN live training room, 100% free trial. User indicators on our strategy. Click here. When you click there, you will be brought to, well, hang on. I had to restart my browser. So when you click there, you'll be brought to this page right here. All we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. You hit the submit button. Once you do that, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click that confirmation link, we do not know that you took the free trial. All right. All right. Now, spreadsheet. Um, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you'll read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Now, as I said, today is the 20th day of February 2018. Today we made seven ticks in crude, five ticks in gold, and 12 ticks in the ES. That put us up 270 on the day, 270. Today it took 29 minutes and two trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we were up $100 a contract, and we took a total of seven trade opportunities. So on the month now, we're up $4,111. That's over 12 days, averaging $342 per day. Okay, so we're almost double last month. Um, on the year now, we're up $6,630. That's over 31 days, averaging $213 per day. And our biggest gainer of the month is the ES. That's totally unusual. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay. On the gold, we had some good opportunity today. Um, had a big run up here this morning, and then when the markets opened up, they were pretty flat for the first 10 or 15 minutes. Um, we had a break even right there. Then we got plus five right there. And we had another break even somewhere. I don't know where. But there was another break even. Um, it was probably right in this area right in here. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, probably right in that area, but I don't know. I can go back and look. But anyway, uh, hmm. I'm just reading the comments. Um, all right, and that was it for the gold. Okay, we ended up with plus five on the gold. Uh, this is the Euro. Now, there were a couple of opportunities here on the Euro, but none that I was able to get into. There was a short right here that I missed, a short right here that I missed, and then during the break, there was a long right there, 
and that was pretty much it. The Euro was was not very giving today as far as trade opportunities go. Um, this is crude. Now, crude started out with a bounce off the BBC right here that if you would have gotten into it, it was a really nice trade. Okay? But I missed it. And then you see I had drawn these these lines in here to show that it was in a triangle formation and it was getting really choppy. All the markets were at this point. Um... Then we had a close, once it broke out of that, we had a close above the trend line right there, where we got five ticks profit. Um, we missed a trade right there. It changed directions, and it had a long there that we missed. One there that we got two ticks on. And one here that was a break even. I could have changed the number of trades. Uh, one there that was a break even. Then during the break, um, it really took off here. I don't know why, but it was a long there along there and along there um, yeah and possible short opportunity right here 6219 going down okay um, on the ES let's see we had two on the ES right yeah one here for eight ticks then we missed the follow-up I didn't have my zones on during the session so I had highlighted these areas, even though they were so close to the zone. But that would have worked out. Um, the follow-up right here would have worked out. And the four ticks right there would have, or it did actually work out. Um, it changed direction, started going back up into the zone. Uh, there was an opportunity here above the zone. Another one right here that would have been a break-even. A shorting opportunity here that would have been a break-even. And then we got into the uh, we got into the break here. You see, we had to break this dynamic resistance. It would have been a long right there for a couple of ticks, and a long right there for a couple of points. Okay, it would have given you a short right back here that you would still be in right now. All right, that was the morning session. Um, Okay, so today is the 20th day of uh, February 2018. We had seven ticks on crude, five ticks on gold, $270 per contract. Uh, we had 12 ticks on the ES. Worked out to $270 per contract. Um, today took 29 minutes and two trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're up $100 contract, and then seven trades total. So on the month now, 4111 That's over 12 days, averaging... $342 a day. That's gross profit. Um, I should put something in here about gross daily profit. But anyway, down here, gross yearly total, $6,630. That's over 31 days, averaging $213 per day. Okay. Again, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you can read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Um, yeah, if you have not taken a trial with us, go to the home page here at CFRN.net. Right up here at the top, it says sign up for the CFRN Live Training Room, 100% free trials, user indicators, learner strategy. Click here. Um, if you click there, you'll be brought to this page right here, where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Click that submit button, and you'll be sent to confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click the confirmation link, well, we don't know you took the trial. Okay? Okay. Um, with that, we can pass it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Overlooking the South Mountain, America's largest city park. That's Studio A. If you are ready in Studio A... Alex in Philly. I thought you were going to become a partner. All right, Dwayne, if you are ready. And if you are talking, we cannot hear you. But I'm guessing you're still trying to figure out the Keurig. 
Anyway, um, we just broke dynamic resistance right here on the euro, and it's starting a pullback. Okay. You talking to me? I was talking to you. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, the David R made it real funny. We were talking about the Mayans and the calendars and the end of time and yes. all that. He said, "No Mayan knows the day or the hour. Only the Father in heaven." Oh my goodness! We told Mayan jokes for years, waiting on 2012, and nobody ever came up with that before. Get it? No Mayan, no man. The scripture says, "No man knows the hour," but. Mm. He said, "No, Mayan. No, it's. I guess. I guess you had to be there." I okay. A, I need a laugh track. You ain't even any crickets. <laughs> I mean, that was really funny. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So, what do you want to do? Take the charts? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Well, I let me guess. ask you. Let me ask you this. Recap of yes. the recap. Uh, today it took twenty-nine minutes and two trades to get to one hundred dollars per contract. Shut the door. Two trades. Yep. Yep. And I need to fix the number of trades today. That was actually eight. Huh. There. So you've done, you've done this before, right? I I have. I have. <laughs> okay. Over and over and over and over and over. Over and over and over and over again. Okay. So you, you rescheduled my uh, 4 o'clock yesterday because I was in outer space. Uh, yes. Thank you for that. You it was know, actually David who you know, just put that comment in. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry, David. Yesterday was a day from uh, another place. Um, did you reschedule it for today? Uh, he rescheduled, I think. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll check my schedule, and I'll find out. Okay. Yes. And if I do have a meeting with someone, I'll make sure I do my very best to be there. Now, what was I going to talk to you about? There was something. Let me just get the charts out of your, out of your way. Oh, ho, ho. this see, you know, that's a problem. Okay, what I need you to do, because I can't click that silly thing, um, because my cursor's behind it. So you need to push the charts to me. And then yeah, you, but there's you, two of you, and oh, I don't right. know which so, one. Well, push one, and if that's the wrong one, I'll say, hey, Michael, please push the other one. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking it's the other one. Okay. Michael P. says, I keep waiting for your comment on Joy Behar. You know, my wife kind of stays on top of... The stuff she says because she watches uh, Outnumbered. That's like one of her favorite shows. I don't know if you've ever seen that, Michael. It's on Fox News, on the Fox News channel at about 11 a.m. It's four attractive, absolutely brilliant women, uh, and they have one lucky guy. That's his hashtag, one lucky guy. So it's these four beautiful, intelligent women talking politics, and then there's a guy who sits in the middle. And it's a different guy every day. And they're hashtag outnumbered the show. And he's hashtag one lucky guy. So she really mm. enjoys it. She's amazed by how by how, how smart. I mean, I mean, like if people sit down with us, like you and I could talk for hours on end about markets and different things. And they might go, gee, that guy knows everything. But we don't. And, and these ladies on The View... Or not on the few that's the Joey Behar show, but on on the Fox News. I mean, it seems like they know everything, but they don't. They know what they know, and they know it really, really well. And and they are all very careful not to steer from that path where you know their ignorance might show. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's that's my I take do. on it. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> oh, I'm glad she has some people to look up to in the world. Now, tell us, Michael, what Joey Behar said because. Honestly, I don't know. And the wife's not here for me to ask, so uh, we'll certainly talk about it. Or I could just ask my friend. Now, Michael, I sent you an email. I see it says read. Yeah, the first top of it is the editor's edi editorializing. And the bottom part is what he's editorializing about. 
And remember, I told you yesterday, I thought I had some first person, second person kind of things. Yeah, some um, conflicts. Yeah, so maybe I was just, if, I don't know what your schedule is like. You might have to go somewhere. But if you have time, if you could go there and, and maybe get me on track, I mean, you could just hit reply and edit in line or something if you if, if you have time. I don't know okay. what you do. Let me, well, let me read what, they, what they're asking. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of... A lot of stuff in there. So. Yeah. So, okay. And Joy Behar commented on Mike Pence listening to God. She said he was mentally ill. Oh, Michael, I did hear about that. And, and I thought that was one of the, you know, that's a very insulting thing to say to any human being. And it's, you know, it borders on treason, I would think, when you say it about the vice president of the United States of America. Can you can you imagine if someone on Fox News, for instance, had said that Barack Obama was possibly mentally ill, or the vice president? What was who was Obama's vice president? What was his name? Uh, Joe Biden. If Joe somebody, Biden. if yeah, if somebody on Fox News had said Joe Biden was mentally ill, uh, boy, more than fur would fly. I think somebody would. Uh, would have gotten in in big trouble, you know. They might have sent him to Libya or something. Um, it's just wrong. It is so wrong on so many levels. That whole show, I used to I used to love Whoopi Goldberg, you know, until she opened her mouth about politics, and then I realized that. And and one of my one of my one of my favorite podcasts. The guy you guys have heard me talk about, uh, Merlin Mann, he's on Back to Work, he's also on Roderick on the Line, and Get This Done by Friday, It's he's on quite a few shows. I always knew he kind of leaned a little to the left, and eh, that's okay, but the other day, and, and they have uh, like a thing on their podcast, they don't talk politics, because they don't want to, they have a lot of, a huge audience, but he did the other day. He started talking about the news that he watches and how he's got it set up, you know, to capture all these shows on CNN and MSNBC. And a little part of me died when he said that. Because now I realize how far... He lives in, in Frisco. Uh, I realize how far out there he is. I mean, he's like so far left, he's like hanging out over the ocean. I mean, it's... It's bad, you know, it's, and, and I really admired this guy. He's funny, he's intelligent, he's witty. Uh, you know that guy that you grew up around, maybe you went to high school with him, and everybody liked being around him because he always made you laugh. He just, it didn't matter, if you'd be at the supermarket in line and he would find something just so clever to say that you're laughing and and that kind of person you know they they draw people around them just as the other guy that's always complaining about stuff repels people and and that's Merlin he's so likable and so talented and uh, I don't know now we're gonna have to take him out and shoot him I guess so oh well all right I guess I'll let you go man because you Okay, well, I'm trying to see this. I mean, one of the one of the things in there, I mean, says you're gonna have to change the whole thing. It's too long. That's one of the things. Oh, I, did it exceed 500 words? Uh, I'm trying to find out how many right now. I'm, I just copied it into Word, and in here somewhere, I know there's a word count. Oh. I just gotta find it. But yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going through. Okay, well, you take care of that, and I'll, I'll talk to the audience. And John's going to join okay. us. I spoke to him while I was in line at the post office, so let me see if he's here already. Oh, okay. my goodness. I can't open his mic. Here it is. I can. Is he there? Um, yeah, it's 1,230 words. <laughs> yeah, it exceeded 500. Well, um, I'm not sure 500 is the limit. Let me see. It, he said between 300 and 800 is what okay. he said. All right. And John's not there. 
John's not there, man. Okay, so while you're reading that and looking at it, could you stick around until John shows up just so you can open his mic? Yeah. Because it'll be, it'll be in just a few minutes because uh, we haven't okay. talked. Okay, okay. guys. Uh, man, so much, so fast. And now i got to tell you about it. Okay, let's bounce over to uh, the cryptocurrency for just a moment. Now, if you bank with Bank of America, you may have heard that Bank of America, if they catch you buying cryptocurrency, they will shut your account down. Okay? Now, I wonder why. Well, take a look at this. Bank of America has filed more cryptocurrency patents than any other company. Oh, do you think they might be going to issue their own cryptocurrency? And they don't want you blowing your money on that other rubbish when you could buy the Bank of America cryptocurrency. That's all I can figure. Uh, no other reason makes good sense to me. Also, something uh, that I am proud of. I told you last week that we were working on something that I didn't know if it had been done before, but we were going to attempt to do it. And that thing's flashing, so I'll make this quick. If you go to any one of our sites, uh, Christian Traders, uh, Crypto Daily Info, Crypto World Radio, uh, CT Global Media, you'll find in, it should be in the bottom right hand corner, I fixed that, CT chat room. Click it and gee, our reveals are not that great. I and mean, I gotta I just gotta say. Um it's not positioned right. Alright guys, you, this is this is beta. But if I type hello Wow, that's a pretty nice sound. Uh it wasn't like this last night. It wasn't all jacked up at the top. Uh, so obviously we've got... So it shows over here who the different people are that are logged in. And I'm assuming it will push this down. Okay. Anyway, the beauty of this is you can... If you're on CFRN, you can chat with people on CFRN. But you can also chat with people who are on Crypto Daily Info or CT Global Media, or Free Charts, or Christian Traders. One chat box, many sites. And once you're in here, I haven't actually done it myself, you can create your own private room and you can make uh, video calls, high quality video calls, uh, to anybody. Uh, and it's free. So like on a Saturday, you know, if you want to get a hold of grandma and let the kids talk to her, you come in here. I'll get all the instructions for you. Okay, but John is out there now. John is there now. So yeah. how cool is that? You can now, from any of our sites, talk to anybody on any other one of our sites. And we're rolling out more all the time. And you can make video calls to grandma. So pretty sweet anyway uh, <clears throat> now you should start telling people about that you should start telling people about the forums we have a forum for every one of the major cryptocurrencies based on market cap now why do we want them to come to our site and and talk on our forums about other cryptocurrencies so that we have a chance to let them know about the CT global token right right <clears throat> now I, I have something I do need to share with you uh, can you go ahead and open John's mic for me please yeah keep losing okay. your sound so and hear music in the background boy Frederick I don't know what's uh, I don't know what's causing that we don't have any music playing at the time uh, the radio station I mean, we're, we're broadcasting across the radio station along with everything else, so I don't know. Hey, John, are you there? 
Yeah, can you hear me? I, yes, I can, I can hear you uh, uh, quite well. Now, I have something Good. that I need to run through with the, with the folks, but I don't know how limited your time is today. So if you want to just go ahead, this is not something that you need to hear, but anyone who has participated in the CT uh, Global presale, I'm going to share this with you. I, I've sent out an email over the weekend to everybody. Uh, there's a press release coming out. But I'm going to share it with you on the radio. We'll do it towards the end of the show. Let's just go ahead and talk to John for now, get his take on the markets, because I know his time is limited. Thanks. Um, I guess, uh, you know, the, 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 because of the long weekend, there was actually quite a lot of trading since Sunday night. And, the you know, if, if you remember what I said last week <clears throat> about the grains, once they kind of get their mojo, they're kind of unstoppable and... Um, you you, you got to be long, and we've kind of been saying that really since the bottom. I don't think anybody would dispute that. We've, we've been saying, you know, to, to, you've got a positive bias on the grains, and really you need to be exposed to the to the long side now, um, because uh, you know in a bull market, surprises on the are on the upside, and the grains soared on. Uh, I think we the last time we put a buyout on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, or. So, you know, Thursday, Friday, we were buying. <clears throat> Anyhow, the the grains exploded higher uh, on Sunday night. They they pulled back a little bit. I think we sold them up around ten thirty eight, back to ten thirty two. We've got a buy stop above the market. <clears throat> the meal is particularly strong, which is a good sign. The wheat uh, and the corn. The corn is really strong, but the wheat has pulled back quite a bit. But I would think. Uh, look, you've always got to be careful buying the weakest uh, of any group. Let me show uh, them, John. Let me show them right here. Guys, take a look at my chart at the soybeans. This is the Sunday night Globex open. On Friday, we closed soybeans down at 1021. And then Sunday night on the Globex open, we opened at 1031. That's a 10-point gap higher open. That's pretty substantial. John, do you have any reason behind that? Uh, you know, <clears throat> maybe the weather. <clears throat> I think I think we've kind of pushing. You know, we've been pushing the limits of global or, or American production, or North American production on grains for some time now, and uh, <clears throat> we've probably maxed out in terms of what is possible with fertilizers and everything, and um, <clears throat> enhanced plant plant growing stuff and everything that they have these days. So anything it's sort of price you know uh, it, it was underpriced for perfection in other words maximum output a lower price minimum price but <clears throat> remember first of all there's a lot of <clears throat> this is probably going to happen with the silver one of these days you know there's a, there's a huge short position in the grains obviously which happens when when you've been in a bear market for a couple of years uh there tends to build up a very big short position um and so, you know, when the shorts start getting threatened by big bounces like this, it, it, it's sort of self-perpetuating. Now, you've noticed we've come down and tested the opening of last night. Uh, it's a little, you know, to get if you're getting buying today, it's obviously more risky than any time we've been talking about it for a while. But, you know, you can't rule out the grains could just jump up again tonight and and, keep, and even go higher you know so <clears throat> you know you could potentially if it if it turns up a little bit more positive before the close i'd, I'd probably go you know think about going long um and i'd put you know I'd, if the gray if the wheat turns uh, during the night or something i'd probably consider going in into the wheat again so uh the but you know, and, and look, we mentioned the coffee. The coffee, I said it could c come down and test the 115. It hasn't, it seems to be reluctant to do that, but I wouldn't rule it out because it might even take it out. It, it bounced off a 117 low this morning, got back to 119. The cocoa pulled back a bit, but the cocoa now, I was thinking about this. I haven't really done the work on, on the cocoa just yet, but um, the, the, uh, uh, you know, we could be having broken above 2,000 again. We could be starting a new bull market that could take us uh, 
you know, way, way higher. You know, as the world's getting wealthier, you know, chocolate is, uh, you know, there's a limited supply, cocoa, in the world. And there's been a lot of problems in both coffee and cocoa. It's less less so with coffee today, uh, with the price going down. But uh, cocoa prices have remained pretty high for a long time. So, you know, at one time, cocoa went to about $5,000 a uh, ton, I think, uh, whatever the number is. And um, uh, we could be, you know, we could be in at the start of a commodities boom that could take prices, you know, could take the grains back to 1800 all-time highs and the beans. <clears throat> let, me ask take, a, uh, let me ask an offbeat question uh, that I should probably know the answer to. Uh, cocoa that you put in milk to make a hot drink and uh, cocaine, those come from the same plant, correct? No, no, they don't. I don't know. They're totally no? different. Oh, no. okay. So yeah. what's, the, what's the cocoa... That you're talking about what's that plant called cocoa beans the cocoa beans okay and uh, the cocaine that, that comes mainly from... Pro, they come from the main producer is uh, west africa uh, southwest uh, uh, ghana or one of those small countries uh, uh, ivory coast i think is a big producer so, so one comes from the beans and the other comes from the leaves is that correct yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay but, but it coffee, is ultimately you know, the same plant though okay just different no no it's different it's different no oh, it's, it's not no plant. it's different Okay. Totally different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If uh, <laughs> if it was the same, there'd be an oversupply of cocoa in the world. Yeah. That's I, for I sure. just, Yeah. I was kind of <laughs> thrown there. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the um, look, the lumber is just unbelievable. Uh, it's uh, hitting new all-time highs again today. It's almost limit up again at 516, um, and uh, the cotton. We we actually put a buyout on the cotton both a couple of days ago and and again this morning or overnight and cotton shot up about two to almost 230 or so it's pulled back a little bit we sold it at 78 but i'd be looking to rebuy it here i think the cotton is probably going to go tends to go with the grain so you know you've got a little bit of a heads up on the cotton uh the weird thing is <clears throat> the metals are completely ignoring the grains which is, which is kind of a head scratcher uh, the silver is not too, not doing too badly, but the gold is down a lot. You know, after the, after last week's rocket rocket uh, move higher, uh, this is really an unusual kind of um, uh, thing to happen. Except that the dollar is partly behind it. However, <clears throat> what I think we have to be very much on the lookout for is how the gold behaves pretty much from from here on out going into tomorrow, because tomorrow afternoon. The minutes of the Fed are going to come out, okay. and they're they're probably going to sort of talk about raising rates, and that might actually be you know it's going to be tough. To, uh, look, it could be a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, as I said last week, you know when when the gold went up on on higher rates, uh, it seemed like logical. But now it's you know now rates are going up again, and the market's going crazy. But gold's not. You know, last week gold and the market went up together, and now they're going the opposite way, which is uh, a, a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, now, the VIX, I talked about the VIX on Friday, and I actually took it home. I went long the VIX over the weekend. And because the down opening today in the market, which we sold from the highs of um, Sunday night when it rallied, uh, turned out to, into quite a plunge actually and several tests of the lows and the VIX opened up about a dollar sixty this morning somewhere like that so that was a nice uh, trade to take off the table uh, however I, I'm as I was saying last week you know <clears throat> the VIX started going up quite a while before the last correction started and it's sort of doing the same today I mean look we, we are up 54 on the Nasdaq and we're actually um, uh, we're uh, pretty much uh, we're still up dollar dollar fifty or so on the VIX. So the VIX is not giving up too much ground here, uh, and at least at the moment. It might do later on today. The more the VIX loses today, the more powerful the market is going to be. Um, <clears throat> another good thing today is a Maxim came through for us. And uh, it's it's listen. It, it absolutely went crazy this morning. It it came right out of the blocks. It had a little bit of a lower opening, 
and then it it's screamed higher with buying that we have not seen in this stock since I've been talking about it. So that was good to see. However, there's been a bit of a pullback, and uh, Maxim's not going the same way as the market, really as, as strongly as the market. But um, I I think that it could potentially come back and test the 62 level or possibly 6220 if it turns up from here i i would and we continue to go strongly as we are in this market higher uh then you could see a lot of buying coming in late into maxim because one of the reasons why the market's doing so well today is because of this takeover with qualcomm mm. and npx <clears throat> which is uh T tell me about that i'm, I'm not uh, nxp sorry with it. Uh, there's there's a takeover. They raised the bid. Uh, hang on a second. And so Qualcomm took somebody else over. That they're trying to buy somebody right now. Oh, hang okay. on a second. Yeah, a NXP Semiconductor. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it was a hundred and hundred and eighteen uh, on Friday. And it's around 125 and a half today. So <clears throat> this this got the semiconductors going, which is and they're very strong today. And you know people are probably short the, the Nasdaq, short the markets, uh, and because of Friday we did get a kind of a sell signal. Uh, but the markets have just been incredibly uh, resilient today and uh, have hardly pulled back at all. So <clears throat> um, I, I I think that. You know, towards the late the late in the day, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if Twitter accelerates higher, um, which it's already doing. Maxim and some of these other stocks could could really uh, and and look, um, you know, you got to be. I mean, you have to take a shot if you if you're if you're into it. With this takeover that happened with this NXP, it could mean that the takeover of Maxim is one step closer, and. Remember, if you go back and look at what happened before it went to seventy-five dollars, uh, it um, there was no warning. We were at fifty-eight dollars, and it was a few minutes—you know, like fifteen minutes before the close on a Friday, I think. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, bam! You know, the <laughs> stock at seventy-five dollars, like in a heartbeat. Now it got it got knocked down, but uh, it is it is now looking better than it has at any time since you know the trouble. Uh, we had a few weeks ago so uh, but i'm not you know i'm not oh, totally in love with it at the moment in, in terms of the technical way it's been acting today um <clears throat> because it's i would have thought it would be one of the stronger stocks now it's pulling back and it, and you know these these people have a habit of knocking the thing down and trying to get long cheaper price that's probably what's going on i think the stock's being manipulated but if it turns up, you know, if it gets through this correction and turns up towards the close, uh, it's probably uh, almost a must-hold situation. Uh, I would probably now look at the uh, VIXs are going down now. So we actually just put a sell out on them a short while ago. So um, uh, the the uh, this is uh, kind of really bullish for the market now uh, when this thing, especially if the VIX starts going down below 43, you know, back into the 42s or lower it, it could be setting up for a continuing rally this week and you know if if given the way the market is right now if the fed says if these minutes are friendly you know positive for the markets i mean jeepers you know we could really go places tomorrow and remember we're, we're rallying we've what's happened is we've had the biggest week in history last mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. <clears throat> Following my comments uh, Friday, the Friday before, mm -hmm. saying you're going to see a rally that you never seen the likes of in your life. Yeah, now you nail that and, one. Thanks, and it's still going on. And the point is that when you have the biggest, I actually, if you go back to 2013, which was the last biggest up week for a long, long time, you know, the market went higher. So a lot. I mean, it not just didn't go higher. Look at where we are today. So you know, this is a pretty big deal. What has happened doesn't mean that and there's no guarantees we're going to go higher because of the situation that we're in. But given that it's a, almost a record up week or maybe a record up week, you know, you would think there's a lot of follow through. And I'll give you an example. Uh, we mentioned CMG, uh, Chipotle Mexican Grill mm -hmm. last week. <clears throat> and um, that stock has you know, had a very, very bullish uh, weekly <clears throat> and a very bullish couple of days from a huge gap up 
the first of all because it's uh, 250 or so 252 251 gapped to 280 to 281 uh went sideways for for a couple of days then took off on friday and then there was a little bit of a retest this morning so it broke through through 300 on friday got up to 305 and since this retest this morning has gone absolutely bonkers the stock it's it's just gone straight to 320 in a in a furious uh, streak of buying and I think part of the reason for that <clears throat> is um, is uh, that uh, you know because people have been shorting this stock for a couple of years, uh, you know the, the, everybody the whole world was short, and now there's a massive reversal underway, and uh, they're panicking and covering like crazy. One of these days, something like that's going to happen with silver and gold, and uh, there's going to be an almighty move to the upside. Um, but uh, this is a pretty good example of what can happen when you get a really powerful situation. And, <clears throat> I mean, it's got an unbelievable monthly bottom on it. It's got a, it's got a developing, it's got a tremendous weekly structure, um, very, very dynamic, and uh, daily is also powerful. I mean, it honestly projects from here. This thing could go up literally another could go up another eighty, a hundred dollars from here. Now, it the, I wouldn't rule out a you know it's sort of got a three wave pull back, a three wave rally off the lows, so it, it might be running into resistance here, and you know nothing goes up for necessarily all the time, so there could always be a quick sharp correction, <clears throat> just like starting to happen with the market again here. Uh, <clears throat> and and look, the VIX has gone down and tested forty three fifteen. Now they're back up again, so it's uh, not. You know, becoming a little bit less um, uh, friendly this market, and in fact, I reverse positions right now uh, per, per our previous sell stops, which we put in a short while ago, right at the top. <clears throat> so we'll see. We'll see if this is just a. Sometimes they have these sell-offs around, you know, between one and three that that are designed to scare everybody, and then they get then it goes back on track. But this is a pretty big update, and the problem is, that, look. The Dow is down 135 or so right now, uh, or less less on the Dow itself, 109. But the uh, and, and the S and P's gone negative again, which is you know not 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 very good. But um, the fact that the Dow and the S and P are underperforming the Nasdaq is kind of friendly <clears throat> in the larger scheme of things to 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 the market. But on the other hand. <clears throat> you know, one has to be mindful of. It's kind of like Trump. You know, he, he's um, this guy. Uh, he's so many landmines popping up around him every day, from things that just come out of the blue. It's 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 unbelievable. And um, I mean, he seems to get through it, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, without a skirmish. But the, uh, the I was watching a video at the weekend, a very interesting video by this guy called Dan Pena. I think he's a billionaire. And uh, he's <clears throat> he was talking about Trump before uh, he was elected, saying he was sure he was going to win. And he's been a big fan of Trump. I think he said that Trump has delivered on 17 out of 20 of his um, promises so far. <clears throat> but he said something very interesting, which I think when you start thinking about it, is, is Trump all over. You know, even though he kind of likes to be loved and all that, he he's actually in many many ways he just doesn't give he doesn't care about you know in terms of getting the job done and executing he really doesn't care about what the consequences are he just is or even what people think of him and that's what Dan Pena was saying that the power of somebody who has that kind of mental tenacity to <clears throat> to uh, to just you know get the head down and get the job done mm -hmm. is something we've probably never seen in any president before. So, and so far, look at the results. I mean, they've been pretty, pretty incredible. And, um, you know, there's a lot more to come. So uh, it's, it's definitely going to be an interesting journey. And the, um, the, the whole, the, the whole thing, you know, this Russian thing, <clears throat> mm -hmm. this, this is, you know, uh, this is a, uh, Oh, there, there was a very interesting um, uh, tweet by dot com 
guy, Kim.com. Kim.com, yeah. Did you read that? About, no, 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 uh, no he, I, haven't, I haven't read it. Uh, well, he's basically saying that this guy, Seth Rich, um, I mean, look, this fellow was killed in the middle of the night, and everybody's trying to say, you know, he was like walking home from a bar or something in a place that no, no, nobody's ever been murdered in like decades. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and Kim.com says, you know, this, he, he, he's the fellow who, no, the Russians never, never hacked the emails. It was an inside job, and it was backed up onto a, uh, onto a flash drive. And it's possible that, that Seth Rich was the guy who did it. Not, that's what he's saying. So, <clears throat> and he was, he was, he knows who it is. He's, he's saying he's willing to testify. So that's pretty big. Um, anyhow, uh, the, the, but the whole, this, this Mueller thing and the deep, this is sort of like the last hurrah of the deep state because they, they, you know, they, because of the FBI's um, unfortunate uh, failures, uh, recently they had to do something to 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 so they put out the bad news first last friday and then they put out the good news uh which was the, the indictments and uh that's all that everybody's been talking about since friday which is com complete i mean it, it, somebody said uh aren't these the fellow are these the fellows who got the special visas by kerry to enter the country <laughs> in 2012 or whether yeah. the, or 2014 i think or something right. uh, in 2014 or were they the, the some of the people who were expelled in 2016 so you know there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye and it's a lot of hogwash uh really the most of it is just uh, talking points and and it's all blown up out of proportion you know it's just this whole russian thing is just it's it's so over the top. You can't even you can't even make uh, it up. Trump put out a pretty strong tweet or something this morning. I didn't. I just saw the headline. Any, uh, any idea? He, uh, he's just kind of fed oh, up with the whole thing. I think he's ready to you know put his foot down or do something. It probably will. I, I mean, I don't know why he doesn't get ahead of the story and go over and, and make a deal with Putin because that's the, I mean, he's running out of time because right now Putin is very vulnerable to, he, you know, he'd sign any deal to, on a non-interference pact in each other's elections for, you know, look, if they can make a deal that, that reduces nuclear weapons or, you know, has all kinds of nuclear deals we've had with Russia without any kind of, uh, you know, that have been adhered to for decades. Why can't they do a deal, uh, you know, on non-interference in each other's elections and also to, um, you know, make a, a no safe haven for any hackers right. in Russia, Ukraine or anywhere else? It's kind of a no brainer <clears throat> because Russia is just as vulnerable to hacking as anybody else and China for that matter. <clears throat> so, I mean, this is a kind of a no brainer where Trump can get o go over there, sign a deal with Putin and kill this story dead. You know, and I wish he'd done it months ago, uh, because uh, it's otherwise it's just a to you know the, the Democrats keep going on and on about it. Yeah, yeah, that's... and 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 so pathetic. Oh, you know, I'm quaking in my boots because we might get hacked in the 18. Who cares? You know, it's a little baloney. You know, it's just. <laughs> It's. I mean, it's so over the over hyped. This story. It's just. It's crazy. Well, it's we, absolutely... we talked. We talked last. It's talking about hacking. <laughs> we talked last week about what happened to that Japan exchange coin check, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I I didn't hear that. They got hacked for five hundred mil, fifty eight billion yen. It was one point eight billion. Well, it, it was fifty eight billion yen, five hundred thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. And while I understand that uh, this is not conducive to their business model, a piece of hardware under two hundred dollars could have saved fifty million dollars. Hmm. But because they're an exchange, I mean, they can't. Uh, we as investors and traders, we can offload our cryptocurrency from the computer, from the internet, put it on a hardware wallet, put it in a safe where it's actually safe. But these guys, you know, apparently, but you have, in fact, I wrote a piece and I'm gonna share it later and email it over the weekend. I'm quite confident that CoinCheck had an extremely robust security system in place. 
one that they thought was more than sufficient to do the deal. Yet, somehow, hackers still managed to get in. And I wrote in this piece the other night, if a, if a black hat hacker gets you in his sights and is bound and determined, given enough time and resources, he will penetrate your defense. I don't care how strong, how sturdy. I mean, yes, he has to be a talented hacker, but uh, nothing, nothing is truly safe online. Uh, I'm, I'm so surprised that this whole online banking thing hasn't turned out worse. I mean, it's actually gone pretty well. But <clears throat> the only way to truly protect your cryptocurrency is to get it offline, off the internet, in a hardware wallet, in a safe, and you don't you don't have to lose sleep. You know, it's a very uh, t to spend two hundred dollars for that kind of protection to prote to think that you could protect five hundred million with two hundred. Uh, anyway, go ahead. I just I just needed to to drive that point home to everyone. Yep. <clears throat> So, um, we are getting a bit of a pullback here. The problem is the breadth is not very good today, mainly because of the Dow being down. <clears throat> uh, now, if this is just a shake up, listen, remember, this is the first correction. This is the first kind of pullback we've had, really, on the NASDAQ today of any consequence. And um, uh, obviously, it looks worse on the Dow and the mid cap uh, and the SP because we're, we're still in negative territory. But. Um, if we if we see uh, you know as long as we don't go much lower than where we are right now, I don't think the uh, situation's too bad for for a decent close today and a potential another update tomorrow. So um, the uh, you know um, that's kind of the, the wrap for today. All right, John. Well, let me see if there's any questions for you specifically in the chat box before you take off. Um, the high end cocoa, according to Jim, was in 1975 at yeah, $5,500 $5, per ton. There you go. There you go. Thank you for that. <laughs> <clears throat> and Jim says also the blind leading the blind, they are, they all fall in the gutter. Satan rules most people. They just know it. Yet yeah, Bitcoin is up nearly 100% in 11 days after falling 70% in three months. Yeah. Let's take a look at that chart, by the way. Uh, yeah, we haven't done too bad calling the Bitcoin. <clears throat> we, uh, Actually, you know, our buy stop at 7,000 and didn't get to six, but we got to seven and really been long since then. Got, got from a couple of in and outs. Uh, and considering we sold it at the top, we, we've kind of done pretty well calling the Bitcoin. It's a check, very difficult thing to, check, to, check, to check predict. Check this out, John. You need to get that call? Go ahead. Yeah, I think and I will. I'll, I'll yeah. talk to you later. Go ahead. Thanks. Bye. All right. Bye bye. All right. So let's pop over to the charts. I wouldn't call that a pop. There we go. Yeah, these I gotta I gotta get them way down in the corner. I don't want them up here uh, in the way. All coming together. All right, we are trading on Bitcoin. Eleven thousand seven hundred, basically. So. This is that little area we talked about. You know, if we could close above that today, and then we got to close above this, and this, and this, and this, and then the last mile will be to take this out. But it's it's obvious to see the work that the market has cut out for it. Okay, uh, the bears, the bears, are those who are looking for opportunities to short the market. There's a contingent of them here, here, and here. And so buyers will have to remain firm on the bid. Buyers will have to take money out of their pocket and make financial commitments in order for the market to even tread water, much less continue to move higher. 
Now, when it comes to price dropping on anything, uh, all it really requires is that buyers stop buying. And if buyers stop buying, just attrition will take that thing down. Yeah, I'm trying to get back over to... Hey, I can do it now. All right. I will get your mic muted there, John. Because the mouse on the other monitor is now working. Outstanding. Okay. Uh, much to cover. And we'll get there as quick as we can. Um, let's see. All right. Bitcoin's price, the recovery continues with prices passing 11,600 so far this morning. Uh, according to Coindesk's Bitcoin price index, at around 7 o'clock UTC today, the cryptocurrency reached $11,645.12 before dropping slightly again. At the time of writing, the Bitcoin global average was 11462 Notably, valuations are higher over on data provider CoinMarketCap, where high prices in South Korea seem to be inflating the figures. At press time, uh, Bitcoin was quoted at 11591 up 5.5% over just 24 hours and 35% for the week. The site's Market data reveals that on South Korean exchanges, BitThumb and UpBit, Bitcoin is changing hands via the BTC KRW pair at over $12,300. That price differential may mark returning confidence in South Korea after regulatory actions and statements in recent weeks caused market fears and a resulting drop in prices globally. Notably, in news announced this morning, the governor of the country's financial watchdog, the Financial Supervisory Service, has reportedly said that the government will support normal cryptocurrency trading transactions. Though a little vague, the statement would appear to indicate a softening of the regulatory stance after a total ban on exchange trading had been touted as an option on the table. Bitcoin's continued rise is also reflected across other cryptocurrencies, with the combined market capitalization now standing at nearly $510 billion, up, 282, up from $282 billion just two weeks ago. Mm. What a difference. What a difference. Certain states in the U.S. are becoming very pro-cryptocurrency. And, you know, Arizona is uh, kind of leading the way to a certain degree. I'll have some, uh, some more information on that for you tomorrow. Now, Vitalik uh, Buterin, a uh, young man from Russia absolutely brilliant, genius, uh, the creator of Ethereum, okay, one of the early thinkers to shape the crypto funding mechanism concept. He hasn't quite put the idea aside. Last month, proposing it could be combined with a decentralized autonomous organization, DAO, to best allow investors to have a say in how money raised gets handled. Flash forward to today and what Buterin called a DICO, D-A-I-C-O, is already being developed with gaming startup The Abyss building its own version for its upcoming token sale. This idea found a free place in my heart. We really want to make something beautiful. Okay. That's from the folks over at The Abyss. Uh, former Monax legal counsel and ICO skeptic Preston Byrne pointed to a deeper question. Do ICO investors really want to be bothered with governance? And the answer is obviously no. So Vitalik, uh, Buterin Vitalik, uh, 
is very much pro the Dico. Uh, he's working on it uh, as a, an example. The Abyss Dico will have another way to increase funds to the team called a buffer. The buffer is an option for a one-time payment. So if one month they have a major expense, which the flow doesn't cover, they can propose a buffer vote to token holders. The article gets pretty lengthy, but I here's what I would do if I were you. Oh, you know, I love it when this happens. It doesn't happen every day, but uh, man, it looks good. When you go to a site and see your own little ad, I mean, a lot of wasted space there. This is computer generated. But anyway, you know, if don't click it if you don't need to. Just, uh, just say it. Cost money. All right. So, I would go on Twitter. I would find Vitalik Buterin. Just type in his last name, B-U-T-E-R-I-N. Follow him. Okay. He developed Ethereum, and of course, the CT Global Token is built on the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. All right. Take a quick look at the ES. All right, Sunday night, we did send out concierge trade alerts, even though Monday was a holiday. On the S&P, we said to consider selling 27.37. We dropped 17 S&P points at $50 per point. And that's per contract available. So if you were, oh, I don't know, a five contract trader, you would go 17 times 50 times five, all right? However, we don't get out at the swing low, which means you can't get all 17. Why? Because we teach you to trail your stop. And if you're trailing your stop, okay, it's going to put in this low, and then it's going to come back, and it's going to hit your stop, and you're going to leave some on the table. That's just the way it works. All right. Moving into Monday, or Monday night, last night, when we sent the alerts out, I'll give you guys a chance to grab a screenshot here in a second. We said to consider selling 2717. The market dropped eight points at $50 a point. There was 400 per contract available. But again, because of your stop, you're going to leave a little on the table. We also said to consider buying 2731. Now, if you got in on this move, right? Depends upon where, if you were willing to put your stop here, you did not get stopped out on the pullback. Otherwise, you did. Okay, so that, that's a potential stop out, that first move. The second move ran up 6.75 points at $50 per point per contract available. On the Dow, Sunday night, we said to consider selling 25 to 55. We had a 200-point drop. Last night, we said consider selling 250.35. We had a 45-point drop and a 60-point drop. And it looks like could have another drop in the works. On the Russell. Uh, let me go back there. That's what Sunday night was all about. Uh, Sunday night, so 15.45. So that would be... Here, fifteen forty five. Okay, <clears throat> swing low. Was fifteen? Looks mm, like we got about fourteen points there, give or take. And then we move into Monday. Okay, this was a stop. If you're in it, 
whether you got in it here or here. On the buy side, consider buying 1542 if the opportunity presents. There's a move worth $250 per contract available and another move, $250 per contract available. Okay. Now I'm thinking about it. Let me drag this over for anybody that wants to take the screenshot. Let's see if we can get Monday and Sunday all in the picture. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So let me. We'll start with Sunday. If you want to, if you want to snap Sunday. Five, four, three, two, one. Got it. Monday, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. All right. So this covers the Russell. We're up to the NQ. NASDAQ, of course, last week's zones. Now, partners get the zones every Monday morning at 6.15 a.m. Eastern. The community at large, I usually reveal this week's zones to you on the Thursday show. That's out of respect for the partners. I mean, it's part of being a partner that you get that gift from Michael and I every Monday morning. And especially for those who also receive the concierge trade alerts, man, when you lay those alerts on top of the weekly trading zones, uh, it's an eye-opener. I'll tell you that much. All right, on the NASDAQ, uh, I didn't even look at Sunday, 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 sell 67.94. Was that 67.94? Okay, sell 67.94. And important prices, important areas are almost always tested. And so we can see first move down from 67.94. Uh, let's just call let's round let's round that up to 67.60. So that's 34 times twenty dollars per point. except you don't get out at the swing high or swing low, trailing a stop. And then it looks like it did the same thing again, right here. And we'll call that 33. So that would be 33 times $20 a point and not 200. Okay, and uh, last night we said to consider selling 67.55. That was a 27 point drop at $20 per point. We also said if you have the opportunity, consider buying 68.01, and that ran up 40 points, $20 per point, $800 per contract available. Gold. Last week's zones. Now, what do we got? Okay, I guess back up for Sunday. Sunday on goal. <clears throat> Wanted to sell 13.45 if we had the opportunity. That came right there. You know what? It did trigger. It triggered so late that we were literally on top of this. 
so we won't even worry about that. I mean, it, there was money in it, but let's just go to what we put out last night, 1342. The first move down is good for $300 per contract available. Second move down, important prices, important areas, almost always tested. Good for 400. 1346 was the buy side, no trigger. Ran right up to it and turned around. And the last one, $1,000 per contract available. And it looks like it's dropped a little more. From 1342 to 1332, $1,000 per contract available. Bonds. Haven't looked at them, and now I see why. Stretch them out and see if we can make them look exciting somehow. I don't think so, but maybe, yes, maybe. All right, bonds. Last night the email said consider selling 143.24. Okay. So 143.24. You know, I got to say, after all the time and the research and the energy and the years and the results, and even if you didn't trade the concierge trade alerts, simply knowing what they are and simply knowing what the weekly zones are, that You could then tr you, you could then use any method I suppose you want for entry into the market, but having those two key pieces of information, you don't trade the zones, maybe, you don't trade the alerts, but you know where they are, and you know the importance of those numbers and how price reacts. And if you want a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session so that I can show it to you in detail, I'd be happy to spend a little time with you. Okay, so from 143.24, we dropped down to 143.14. So that's going to be 10 ticks at 31.25 per tick. There are 32 ticks to a point at 31.25 per point. A one-point move. Is a thousand dollars per contract. If you take thirty-one twenty-five, multiply it times thirty-two, that's a grand. Okay. So from the entry to the swing low, ten ticks. Don't really recommend bonds for new traders or really anybody, as far as that goes. But if you like them, if they work for you, if you're good at it, boy, don't let anybody get in your way. All right. Last night. On bonds, we said to consider buying, given the opportunity, 144.17. Because, wait a minute, I gotta get, it was 144.17. Something's wrong. Am I looking at Sunday? Monday. Hmm. We have an error there. We do. So, 143.24 by 144. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. It's not an error. It's just price has not gotten up to 144.17. So, there's been no trigger on the long side from last night. Okay. All right. Soybeans, we had a gap higher open. We had said to consider buying 1034 given the opportunity. It ran up and gave us five points at $50 per point. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. 
price comes down, puts in a doji, it gets just below the trigger, sets up another opportunity, good for 3.25. Now at 12.50 a tick, four ticks to a point, $50 per point, the payout on soybeans is identical to the S&P. Difference is it costs more margin to trade the beans than it does the S&P. You can trade the S&P for 500 bucks. You control $130,000 of best of breed S&P 500 equity. 130,000 for 500 bucks. That's true uh, the Dow's 500, the Nasdaq's 500 and the Russell. Each one of them uh, like with the Dow, you take the current price of the Dow, multiply that times five, as in five dollars per point, and that tells you what you're controlling. Do the same with the Russell, do the same with the NASDAQ. Now, I put this in earlier, no short trigger yet, because at the time there wasn't. We had said in the email last night to consider selling 1027. So it looks like that just got triggered. Yep, so I'm going to change this. And there we go, so 1027 and the low so far. Ten twenty-five fifty. Now what is it? So at ten twenty-five, that'll give us two points. And there it is, right there. Okay. All right. So we've covered everything but the crude. Let's do the crude real quick. We are in the J contract now, just so you know. Uh, last night's email on crude. Consider being a buyer at 62.75. Haven't seen it. Or consider being a seller at 61.65. And you really don't need these. Seventy-five. Okay, I see trouble. Wow, we had this Acapello group uh, come to church yesterday. They're called Driven. I forget which college they, they go to. They're an Acapella group. There's, I think, about six or seven guys, and... I got to tell you, they were really awesome. Okay, crude, so 61, 65. <clears throat> okay, so this first little move down, of course, I mean... I won't go into all the stop stuff, but those of you that are following this and trading this, you know how to position your stop and whether it's worth it or not. This dropped from 65 Wait a minute. Maybe I better get on the good foot here and do this right. 61, 65. Okay. So 6165. There we go. All right. So this dropped to 57. I mean, I think you can see the. Uh, yeah. Not what we're looking for. Okay. So if you eke something out of that, congratulations. If you got stopped out, well, that's the truth about trading. You will get stopped out. 
no guru, no crystal ball, no indicator oscillator, tip sheet, chat room, nothing. Not nobody, not no thing, not no way, not no how can prevent you from being stopped out. It's it's like saying, I'm going to be a baker and make the best bread in the world, but I'll never get flour on my apron. Well, that's not going to happen. Okay. I'm going to fly an airplane, but I'm never going to go up in the air. Really? I'm going to be the captain of a ship, but I'm not going out on the water. You see what I'm saying? Getting stopped out is part of trading, and, and people are forever trying to separate, you know, oh, well, here's trading, and, and here's getting stopped out, and with our indicator, or our oscillator, or our methodology, or our blah, 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 you don't have to get stopped out anymore. Well, who wouldn't buy that? Uh, that creates, it's criminal. That's what it is, it's criminal. Okay. I'm going to share with you what I started to share with you earlier. You probably got this as an email. And you might be thinking, yeah, man, i got to sit through this again. Uh, yeah. Okay. The CT Global. Now, this has gone out as an email. This is on its way out as a press release. And I'm sharing it with you on the radio just so we have the audio of it. Okay. So stay with me a couple minutes. The CT Global token presale ended January 31st, 2018 as scheduled. Next step, mass distribution. If you participated in the CT Global presale, please email your public wallet address to support at christiantraders.com. If you've already done so, the next task is purchasing your crypto hardware wallet. Security. Purpose of a hardware wallet is primarily security. It enables you to move your cryptocurrency offline where it is safe from hackers. Is that important? Absolutely. During the first week of February, CoinCheck was, Coin was hacked to the tune of 58 billion yen. That's 530 million U.S. dollars. Now, I'm confident that CoinCheck had what they considered to be a very robust security system specifically designed to fend off such attacks. Unfortunately, it still happened, which proves once again, if a black hat has you in his sights, given enough time and resources, he will eventually penetrate your defenses. If he is forced to abandon his elegant code and resort to a brute force attack, beware. Not only is your crypto gone, if your security bruised his ego, there's a good chance he might trash the place on the way out. While perhaps not practical for CoinCheck due to the nature of their business, an investment of less than $200 would have kept their $500 million completely safe. Once tokens are transferred from a digital wallet to a hardware wallet, and the wallet is then disconnected from your computer and the internet, no matter how talented or ticked off the hacker might be, your digital assets are safe. A cryptocurrency hardware wallet is similar to an external hard drive or thumb drive. The difference is the ability to read, write, and understand cryptography. Make sure that your hardware wallet is ERC-20 compliant, a hardware wallet capable of holding all types of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and the other altcoins is obviously the best choice. The most important thing is that it be ERC-20 compliant. Once disconnected, be sure to put the hardware wallet in a fireproof safe or safety deposit box. Never share your private key with anyone. If you wish to encrypt your private key, I have two free open source encryption programs. A link was in that email that went out last night. If you didn't get a copy of this email, Email me, support at cfrn.net, and I will send you a copy of the email. It is also recommended that you make two paper copies of the key. 
As tempting as it is to copy, paste, and print it out, don't. Believe it or not, even a mediocre hacker can break in and read the print head on your printer. What are the odds? Probably astronomical. However, to not take every possible precaution is a form of gambling. And we're traders, not gamblers, right? Trader or investor? Is it possible to be both? Yes. However, you must be extremely disciplined. Anytime you want to add to your position or invest in a different cryptocurrency, simply retrieve the hardware wallet, repeat the process, and then lock it away again. To actively day trade cryptocurrencies, you will need to keep just enough in your digital wallet to underwrite the level that you are currently qualified to trade. I spoke to a gentleman the other day. We had a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. He was on our trial. My heart absolutely broke for him. Nicest guy in the world. He had been through some kind of life experience and he had got some kind of lump sum and that was supposed to carry him to the next job. I don't know. Anyway, a brokerage firm, I will not call their name, allowed him to open an account and the broker knew that he had no futures trading experience. Within a week, he dropped $25,000. Now that's criminal. I said, what kind of size were you trading? Well, 10, 15 contracts. He goes, I don't know what happened. He was the first day I did really, really good. I said, no, no, you got lucky. He goes, well, I sure didn't get lucky the second day. I said, you understand why I say that, right? You had no training, uh, you had no mentoring, no coaching. You just got out there and started clicking buttons. He goes, yeah. That's basically what happened. I said, the fact that that broker and that brokerage firm would allow someone with absolutely no experience whatsoever to just hit the ground trading 10 and 15 contracts, uh, I, that just seems criminal to me. And then they sent him over to that one place where you do the combine thing. And, and, and then, right, <laughs> now... Trust me, I know an awful lot about this place because a lot of people have come to me and cried on my shoulder. But in a nutshell, okay, people who have more money than they know what to do in are always looking for some place to put it. And so the way this is uh, portrayed to traders is, well, come with us over here and we're going we're gonna to charge you money. We're going to nickel and dime you quite a bit. But once you pass these various tests, combines they're called or something, well, then you're going to be able to trade other people's money, OPM. Now, I think about this. You're a wealthy individual, and you decide that you want to have someone trade money for you. Because you'd rather go to the beach or go fishing. So you're going to pay somebody to trade your money and you're going to split, you know, profits with them. Sure, it happens all the time. Would you hire a hedge fund or some seasoned Wall Street trader? Or would you hire someone who is just learning how to trade. Now, now, now think about it because I'm kind of destroying a, a couple of companies' entire business plan. Think about it. The, the wealthy person, the one with the money, the one that's going to fund your account, why would they do that? Why would they give their hard-earned money to somebody who just passed the test, you know, to, to, to start doing this, when they could pay the same money to a guy that's been doing it for 20 years and has a proven track record. Why? Why? That's what I keep saying is why. And nobody can answer the why. So I know you get those emails and, oh my 
God, it looks good. It looks so attractive. I just wish it was real. But it's not. So back to what I was trying to tell you here. <clears throat> All right. If you're, if you're going to day trade cryptocurrencies, then you'll need to keep just enough of your digital wallet to underwrite the level you currently are qualified to trade. If you simply want to add to your position, a position you already have, okay, or add a new cryptocurrency to your portfolio, you break out your hardware wallet after you've already, ha you already have the currency in your digital wallet, you hook up that hardware wallet just long enough to make the transfer, disconnect it from the computer, from the internet, put it back in the safe, fireproof safe, you're good to go. Sleep well. Now, CT Global pre-sale tokens are restricted from trading for six months from the date of purchase. Date of purchase refers to the date payment was received. This date may vary from the date on your certificate of ownership. The date could be as early as November 1st, 2017 for the first CTG owners. This action approved by the majority will help to facilitate a smooth transition from pre-sale to the open market. Many cryptocurrency values have failed to appreciate positively because individuals and even institutions in some cases were holding large positions and greed clouded their vision. The desire to make a fast buck versus giving the ecosystem time to mature became the kiss of death for every member of every one of those communities. We as believers answer to a higher authority. The world views Christians under a microscope. You know this. They may not listen to our testimony, but you better be sure they are watching every move we make. What a field day, what an absolute field day they would have if we took this opportunity that God has entrusted us with and turned it into a pump and dump venture. Not on my watch. We have community members and outsiders who do hold large overweight positions. The good news is that we, for the most part, are a close-knit community with common goals and a unified vision. We, the community, are on the brink of what could become the single greatest financial opportunity of our collective lifetimes. God will only bless us to the degree that we are spiritually mature enough to handle. So if you need to get your house in order, please get your house in order. Now, why our situation really is different. At this time, we are unaware of any other cryptocurrency with a supply of only 1 million tokens. We are also unaware of any cryptocurrency created, designed, and minted specifically for a global audience that totals 2.4 billion people. If you believe that markets should operate under the principle of true supply and demand, you clearly see the potential of what could happen in coming months as open trading begins and awareness of CT Global cryptocurrency the global Christian community begins to spread. Remember, each and every community member, token owner, is responsible for making sure that the word does spread. Doesn't mean you gotta become a salesman and start selling anybody on anything. Just make sure they're aware of it. If they have an interest, they'll do their own due diligence, they'll go to ChristianTraders.com, they'll get the scoop on what's happening, and they'll take whatever action they take. But every member of the community has that responsibility. This is your investment. This is your future. This could be 
the biggest opportunity that many of us have ever faced. As with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all altcoins that have seen major price appreciation, patience is more than a virtue, it is critical. Bitcoin was a topic of discussion five years ago on CFRN and other financial talk radio programs. Because of Bitcoin and its performance, many altcoins today do appreciate at a faster rate due to the increased awareness and participation. As a token owner and member of the community, we must all do our very best to ensure those we know, and even those we don't, are aware of what is taking place here and the opportunity it represents. While Bitcoin has enjoyed most of the headlines, most of the bright lights by being the first on stage, there are other cryptocurrencies that have outpaced Bitcoin by far on a percentage basis. Once the CTG mass distribution is complete, open market trading will begin. When the world sees a line forming on the bid side and minor activity on the ask, we believe it will grab the attention of investors, traders, and the media. As you spread the word, there will be questions. Many, if not most questions, can be answered on the ChristianTraders.com website. If you do not know the answer and cannot find the answer, contact support at CFRN.net or call 949-42-E-MINI. It's better to be honest and say, I don't know, but I will find out, than to create a clever answer that simply tickles the ear, but is possibly not factual okay if it's not on the website don't repeat it until you've asked Michael or I and we have clarified it for you now prayer together we're facing an enormous opportunity not only for ourselves but for every Christian around the globe not only for this generation but generations to come every night at 8 p.m. Eastern I invite all community members to stop for a minute and join me in the spirit of prayer. No telephones, no internet, no chat rooms. Just me and my prayer closet and you in your prayer closet at 8 p.m. Eastern every night for five minutes. Just God and his people. Let our prayer be thy will be done. Let us meditate on the scripture that says it is the Lord thy God who allows thee to create wealth. Last but not least, close out your prayer time thinking of all the other people around the world who are praying that same prayer with you. Scripture says that when any two under one roof come into agreement, there's great power. When a group shares one mind, the mind of Christ, and one accord, heaven comes to earth. We stand where no group of believers has ever stood before. I am honored and humbled to serve with you. Together, we can change the world. If the pre-sale bullet train blew by you, we knew there would be a few stragglers, people on vacation. Michael and I set aside a few tokens for such a time as this. If you have an interest, you should contact us today, 949-423-6464. Support at christiantraders.com, support at cfrn.net. There are a few odd lot sizes. There's one 50,000 token block still on the shelf. Now, we would like to see these included in the upcoming distribution to just, if nothing else, simplify record keeping. If this is your first order, we will offer a substantial, a substantial discount 
to get them off the books before distribution. The 150K block we would prefer to see in the hands of a strong community member. However, if a non-member chooses to purchase them, while not our first choice, we can't or won't discriminate. Non-members will receive a significant discount. Members who have an interest in the large block, email us your best and final offer. There were three stages of the pre-sale and everyone received bonus tokens. To clear the shelves, we are letting you write your own ticket here. This will be somewhat of a silent auction. We will not pit buyer against buyer. Just email your best and final offer to support at christiantraders.com. The best offer received now, this was originally Monday night. I'm extending it to Tuesday night, tonight, February 20th. We'll be notified Wednesday morning via email. Uh, we then need to confirm payment arrangements with you. But what you're bidding on is a 50,000 block of tokens, 50,000 tokens in that block. We all know in the pre-sale, they traded at $1. You bought them at $1, plus you got bonus tokens. So if you have an interest, you simply send an email with your best offer and the best offer will be notified tomorrow morning. Of course, all bid information will be kept strictly confidential. But hey, you can't win if you don't play. In closing, if you have not obtained your digital wallet, or hardware wallet. Watch the video I'm going to put the link to in the chat box right now. This video covers the basics of creating your digital wallet as well as obtaining your hardware wallet. Okay? So let me see if I can copy this link, put it in the chat box. Ah. Uh, you know, that doesn't look, I mean, let me just click through and give you the pure link. There we go. Yeah, that'd be better. Gopies found a way to keep her receipts tidy. So in the chat box is a link, and if you happen to be just listening to the audio stream, you can't copy the link or click the link, email support at cfrn.net, and I'll send you the video, okay? All right. Wrapping it up for today will be our good word for the day. As my notes float to the top, here they come. It's coming, getting closer, and note to da, yeah, to da. All right. The last time we chatted about the importance of self-discipline in trading as well as in your life. Today we're going to swing the pendulum the other way and deal with spiritual depression. Jeremiah 15:16 says, "Your words became for me a joy and the delight of my heart." Now, people in Bible times. dealt with depression, just like we do today. Consider Elijah. He said, I've had enough, Lord, take my life. Job said, I loathe my very life. The psalmist wrote, my soul is downcast. When you're 
clinically depressed, you should seek professional help. But the kind of depression we're talking about here is when your motivation is drained, your desire to pursue God is gone, your conversations have turned sour, you're blind to your blessings, your enthusiasm is forced, and you're in a daze regarding the future. Sound familiar? Now, here are some possible causes. Number one, sin. Sin is like a stone in your shoe. You'll have no peace until you get it out. No holiday, job change, relationship change, or doctor will heal it. But the blood of Jesus will cleanse it. 1 John 1, 7. After sin, we have greed, number two. King Ahab's obsession with owning Naboth's vineyard made him miserable and affected his entire family. 1 Kings 21.4 Number three, comparisons. Constantly comparing yourself to others will depress you because there's always somebody taller, prettier, faster, and wealthier. 2 Corinthians 10.12 Number four, speaking negatively can depress you. Proverbs 18.21 says the tongue can bring death or life those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Number five, fatigue. Jesus called his disciples aside to rest. Why? Because he recognized that when fatigue walks in, faith walks out. Mark 6.31 And last, unforgiveness. When you refuse to forgive someone, you carry them like an albatross around your neck. So, what's the remedy? Often it starts with prayer and Bible reading. Jeremiah, who battled depression, wrote, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. Jeremiah fifteen, sixteen. Now, again, if you're dealing with clinical depression, get professional help. If you're dealing with spiritual depression, you also need professional help. And it's in that book on the coffee table with the dust. It's called the Bible. Crack it open, read God's Word, and be encouraged. Because He's a good Father, and a good Father has good gifts for His children. It's going to wrap it for today, this Tuesday, post-holiday, 20th day of February, 2018. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with His mercy and with His grace. And I'll see you the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.